So Fnatic, at least from a gear or a peripheral standpoint, is not a brand I'm really familiar with. I've never used any of their stuff before. I do know they already have a headset in the market. It's a rebadged TMA2 from III. It's modular, looks great, gets pretty good reviews, and it comes in right around $130 US. Today, Fnatic is shipping a new headset. It's called the React and retails for $69.99. It looks really familiar to some things we've seen in the market already, but believe it or not, it's not a HyperX or a Tackstar OEM. It's got great isolation and a really strong sound signature that makes it awesome for FPS. And it actually sounds really surprising for the price point. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're checking out the React gaming headset from Fnatic. For transparency, Fnatic did send this out for review, but as you should know by now, it doesn't affect my review in any way. So the React retails for $69.99 US and has a really familiar look, bearing more than just a passing resemblance to offerings from HyperX. But I promise, this is not simply a cloud with Fnatic branding. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking so, but there are subtle differences in the build and important differences in the sound. It's built really well, feels very solid. Might not be an original physical design, but it's pretty tried and true at this point. Forks are aluminum and have indicator markings on the inside. Headband is faux leather on the outside and like a breathable sport mesh on the inside with plenty of padding. Stealth branding on top of the headband and where the forks meet the band as well. I do wear these at their absolute max adjustment. They do have some pretty strong clamping force out of the box for me and due to their elongated oval ear cups, they could hit you in a bad spot for pressure, depending on your head size and shape. These are closed back. Outside of the ear cup is a lightly textured matte plastic with a gloss white ring and the Fnatic logo in white. They also have bright orange liners inside marked with L and R. Ear pads are leatherette, really soft, and slow response memory foam. Not only are they comfortable, they work great with glasses, but combined with the clamping force, they do a really good job of passive noise isolation. The oval shape works great here too. Even though my ears touch in some spots, they're very comfortable. My only knock here is that they do get pretty warm for me around the two hour mark. They really seal your ears in there. Controls on the headset itself are minimal. You basically have a keyed section for the detachable mic and the attached cable. This is rubberized and flexible and on its own, pretty short at three feet. This is intentional, it's because it's not a USB headset, you can use this with literally any console, laptop, or phone that has a 3.5 millimeter aux. On the cable, you have analog inline controls here for volume and mic mute as well. The other included cable is a much longer six and a half foot extension that splits into separate mic and headphone jack for use with your motherboard or your external gaming deck. This headphone's rated at only 23 ohms, so you can drive this with almost literally anything out there. I did the majority of the testing for today on the front headers of my motherboard audio that has no discrete amp or additional no power whatsoever. I had zero problems at all pushing this thing. Plenty of volume. This is eSports focused, so it's dead simple in terms of its design, use, accessories, and sound signature. These are 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz, and they sound really good. The goal here was to have tight low end with no fake boosted, uncontrolled, unnecessary bass while delivering clear mid highs. They attempted this with a dual chamber design to mitigate low end distortion, similar to what we saw on the Cloud Alpha. That's actually a good place to frame up the sound of this headphone. There's always this back and forth talk about like, should you go Cloud 2 or Cloud Alpha? I always say the Cloud 2 is gonna give you more bass and more highs, but it's not always controlled and it will distort when there's too much going on. The Cloud Alpha, on the other hand, is gonna have really tight, really low bass and very minimal distortion, but it also doesn't have the brightness on the highs. It feels a little bit stifled. For me, this headphone strikes that perfect balance of both clear highs for audio cues and capable bass that fills out the low end, but doesn't get in the way of the sounds you need in game. Tested in Modern Warfare using the high EQ preset in game, this thing was a beast, actually. I had zero problems dialing in audio cues, hearing guys coming around corners a mile away, hearing footsteps above me, etc. No issue. I was honestly really impressed by the detail and the imaging of this headset. Soundstage isn't the largest. You can hear a little artificial widening there that does the trick for a closed back, so it's not a wide soundstage by any means. But that's not really the goal of this headphone. They intended to isolate outside noise and feed you really precise directional cues 
and they deliver. Mic here is a detachable cardioid boom mic. It does ship with a windscreen installed. It's really flexible and it stays put. It's clearly an omnidirectional mic because you're hearing a lot of fullness, richness in that vocal. It's capturing a lot of the low end that you just generally don't get with a unidirectional microphone. The weird thing that I'm getting on this sample though, I don't know if it's the space I'm recording in, but I am getting something that sounds a little bit like a hall reverb effect or something like that. It's kind of strange. Could be an issue with the motherboard as well. You're hearing this plug directly into my Realtek with zero db a mic boost at 90 percent mic volume and the background noise reduction turned off i do this for two reasons number one because i kind of want you to hear what the pure version of the mic sounds like without any processing because everybody's audio on their motherboard is going to be a little different and two because the background noise reduction on the real tech board makes literally any mic you plug into it sound like trash. The big trade-off with an Omni mic, what you normally get in exchange for that nice full sounding vocal is that the background noise reduction just isn't there. So if you have a loud keyboard or any other noises going on in the background, chances are you're gonna hear a lot of that. These are Cherry MX Browns that I'm sure you're hearing a lot of right now. Nonetheless, pretty surprised overall at the vocal tone and the levels on this mic. And here's the mic on the HyperX Cloud 2. Big difference here is that we're going over this USB dongle instead of plugging directly into the motherboard. The biggest advantage this gives you is in your overall noise floor or that background like static interference, kind of a low buzz or a hum that you get when you're plugging things in directly to your motherboard. Background noise canceling is gonna be about the same, but the big difference we're gonna see here is in the overall level of the vocal and the tone of that vocal itself. Here I sound thin and nasally. The mic is capturing much less of the natural bass that's in my voice, and you're starting to hear some compression artifacts as well. This is pretty much the definition of that negative connotation of the gaming mic. I think the React is the clear winner here. And that's honestly all there is to it with this headset. It's simple. You can tell with the price point of 70 bucks that they spent money on the fundamentals the build quality, the sound, the mic. And they didn't go all out on features that not everybody's gonna use. There's no throwaway simulated 7.1 surround tacked on there just to say they did it. There's no USB interface, there's no software, there's no RGB. And they actually sound pretty good for casual music listening as well. Even as a guy that likes bass, there's enough bass here, but not too much to where it starts to upset the rest of the mix and makes things fall apart. These aren't hi-fi by any means, but for somebody shopping a headset at this price point, I think they're gonna be more than satisfied with the music listening experience as well. Whether or not you feel comfortable wearing these outside the house is more down to personal taste. And in terms of competition out there, at 70 bucks, they come in cheaper than the Cloud 2 and the Cloud Alpha. I would take these over a Cloud 2, and unless you really love bass, over a Cloud Alpha as well. I'd even take them over the highly regarded Cooler Master MH 751. That headset is like the comfort king, and they have a more understated design that blends in a little better in public, but have always sounded bass light to me, and the React sounds just right to me. Another comparison I'll probably get asked about is the Razer Kraken X, which I think now is down to around 40 bucks most places. Kraken X is more comfortable, the mic quality is close, but the sound quality of the React completely destroys the Kraken X, which falls victim to some really boosted and uncontrolled bass, and it's way worth the extra 20 bucks to go this way instead. So this was my first impression of a peripheral from Fnatic, and I gotta tell you, it's a strong one. Probably doesn't hurt that they have their own esports team at the ready to test and provide feedback, it really comes across. This is a very simple, effective, consistent headset that delivers exactly what a gaming headset should with sound quality that punches above its price tag. Big pros here for sound quality and build quality. My quality too, to a certain extent, I really enjoy the vocal tone, but the background noise cancellation could be an issue. Cons here for the aggressive clamping force, which could be bothersome to some until they break in. They do actually break in pretty quick, but the Cloud 2 still beats it in comfort. Some people still really like the convenience of a USB interface, and some people feel like they need that simulated surround for FPS. I just don't get that. Simulated 7.1 might have given you an advantage in simpler times, but modern titles make really good use of the audio engine without it. If you already own a HyperX headset, if you already own the Cooler Master, this probably isn't worth running out and grabbing, but if you're in the market for one, if you're on a budget or you're putting together a Christmas list, I think this is a good way to go. Links down in the description for everything we talked about today. As always, any questions about anything, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.